Oh, hello everyone. This is Dr. Gerig enjoying a cup of coffee. This is labor economics and this is chapter three of labor economics. We are studying labor demand, chapter three, part five. Today we'll talk about the relationship between the cost minimization and profit maximization. So if you haven't watched the previous parts, go to the playlist that this video belongs to and go ahead and watch from the beginning. Excuse me. Watch from the beginning and watch all the four videos to catch up. Subscribe to this channel so that whenever there's a new video upload, you get notifications and catch those. These could be videos related to classes, but I'm also going to be uploading some um, research videos just explaining big, big research papers in like 30 seconds or so and giving you economic updates to keep you smarter. All right. So let's continue about the relationship between profit maximization and cost minimization. I want to remind you that profit maximization will always imply cost minimization, okay, because it's built in. However, cost minimization doesn't i'm gonna put a question mark not necessarily imply profit maximization because when you're trying to produce something at the minimum cost did you choose your output level is your output level profit maximizing output level that's the question so profit maximization involves choosing an output level such that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost and we talked about uh, perfectly competitive companies, price equals to marginal cost. As a result, a perfectly competitive company, marginal revenue equals to price, we talked about it. So we're trying to do price equals marginal cost. As a result, we yielded this. We got this result, right? Price equals to one over marginal product of labor times the uh, wage rate. So what's happening here is that what you'll realize here is that um, this kind of relates to our first order condition, okay? So if you rearrange this, you get value margin product of labor, price times margin product of labor equals to the wage rate, okay? So we also can get this one. This is a long run profit maximization. Value margin product of capital equals to the rental rate, all right? So these imply cost minimization and we can divide the left hand side with the right hand side, right? Cancel this out, these out, watch the previous videos. So you get $1 spent on, right? One, you just swap the places of these two. You get the equality of $1 spent on labor, uh, bringing us the level of output exactly equal to $1 when you spend it on capital. Let's talk about cost minimization a little bit. So cost minimization is all about producing an arbitrary level of output at the lowest cost. Okay, Cost minimization will imply profit maximization if that output level we're trying to produce is indeed Q star. Okay, So it is indeed the best level of output. So as a result, if that's the case, then you have profit maximization so let's see it graphically let's say we are producing q0 star okay q0 star at the lowest cost and assume that this q0 star when you see star it's the best optimal level of output and also which means profit maximizing level of output so if you are indeed producing at the profit maximizing level of output q star then you are actually, when you do cost minimization, if you focus on this level, right? When you minimize your cost, then you're getting actually profit maximization. So let's say we got this Q0 star. How did we get it? You basically got it from, this is principles of micro class, quantity price, right? We have marginal revenue. This is demand curve for average revenue. This is the demand curve for a perfectly competitive company price. This is R. That's also equal to the demand curve. What we did, we did marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Where is marginal cost? Marginal cost looks like this. Marginal cost is J U shape. And marginal cost will depend on the cost generators, right? The wage rate and the rental rate. So 
Marginal cost equals marginal revenue. You determine Q star from here initially, 100. Then you go to this ISO quant. This is your ISO quant and ISO cost curves and grab the ISO quant that matters. This ISO quant I am trying to produce. So I need to produce this at the lowest cost. Now you do your cost minimization. This cost minimization, right? Okay, I minimize my cost. I found the cost curve. ISO cost curve that's tangent to my, that's not tangent, but you get the point. Tangent to my ISO quant. So K75, I need to hire 75 units of capital. I need to hire 25 units of labor. So this is an example of cost minimization implying profit maximization because to start with this profit maximizing output level is the one we are trying to produce at the lowest cost. Okay, so producing Q0 star at the minimum cost minimize the cost by using this KE combination at point P. Any other cost curve right here would give you higher cost. You would still produce Q0 star, but it would give you the highest cost. Okay, so this is a relationship between cost minimization and profit maximization. So in the next part, I get excited. <laughs> what if the wage rate goes up? Okay, wage rate goes up. In the next part, we're going to study this. Wage rate goes up. Your marginal cost is going to go up. Look, wage rate goes up. Your marginal cost curve is going to climb. Wage prime. Okay, costs are going up. So your optimal level of output is going to decline. Okay, so a bunch of different things are going to go up. So quantity goes down. So total cost of production will be affected. But that's the next part and I'll see you in next part. So the best combination gives you profit maximization um, result in this case. Because V minimize the cost to produce the level of best level of output i'll see you in next part the long run labor demand